Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Google Search News series. I hope life is treating you reasonably well wherever you are. I'm your host today, John Mueller, here from Switzerland. With this show, we want to give you a regular summary of what's been happening around Google Search, specifically for webmasters, publishers, and SEOs. If you find these useful, which I hope you do, and if you'd like to stay up to date, make sure to subscribe to the channel. It's been a bit quiet here with regards to launches over the summer. Nonetheless, there are a few things worth mentioning. So without further ado, let's move on to the recent Google Search news. Today, we'll take a look at Search Console Insights, some updates on images, programming for SEOs, and a bunch more. All right, let's take a look. We recently launched a preview of Search Console Insights. It combines data from Google Analytics and Search Console for content creators in an easy to understand way. Its goal is to help site owners improve their sites in Search and to make it easier for them to track their progress. Using all of the features of Google Analytics and Search Console can be challenging, even for experts. Search Console Insights aims to make that significantly easier especially for less experienced site owners. Search Console Insights is currently available as a preview to a limited number of users for initial trials. Unfortunately, it's currently not possible to add new sites, but we hope to expand it over time. If your site is included in the preview, you'll receive an email through Search Console. If you have access, let us know how it worked for you with the feedback links in the tool. I find it exciting to see new approaches for sharing insights with site owners, helping them to improve their visibility in Search. Also from Search Console, we have the following short updates. We recently added a news filter in the performance report. This gives insights into how news content is performing within the News tab in Google Search. On the structured data side, we added support for some new types in the rich results test. This includes article, critic review, and employer rating. The details for all structured data types are in our Search Developers documentation. Finally, a while back, we added support for domain properties in Search Console. A domain property gives you information for all variations of your domain, making it easier for you to see the full picture of your website in Search. We recommend using these where possible, and of course, it's fine to combine them with traditional properties. Moving along to images. We recently launched support for licensable images in Google Images. This allows image providers to give more information about image licensing, better informing users directly in the search results. This can be done either on an image level using IPTC metadata or on a per-page basis using structured data markup. Our documentation has the implementation details, and Search Console can help with the rich results test. Also for images, if your pages are shown in Google Discover, you can help them stand out a bit by enabling large image previews. Google Discover is a simple feed-like experience that shows users content related to their interests automatically. By default, a standard image thumbnail may be shown there. Larger image previews can currently be enabled either by using AMP pages or by using the max image preview attribute of the robots meta tag. This is a piece of code on your pages specifically for search engines. Updating the robots meta tag can be a challenge depending on your website's configuration, so it may make sense to check with your site's developer or administrator to find out more. Our robots meta tag documentation is linked in the description. Slightly different than the usual news, and I realize it's hard to classify any news as usual nowadays, let's switch gears for a moment. One of the trends we've recently seen is SEOs starting to look at programming or look at it again. Back in the early days, many SEOs came from website development, but over time, things have changed a bit. In the meantime, we're seeing more folks try out Python, a programming language that's usable even within a browser. Python can be useful for a variety of SEO and website tasks. While you don't need to know Python in order to be a good SEO, it can be useful. And in general, understanding any programming language makes it easier to understand better how search engines, web servers, and the internet all work, 
even if you don't write code often. When it comes to SEO and Python, there's a lot of information available online. Folks like Root Everett and Hamlet Batista have been regularly publishing articles on everything from how to get started to advanced techniques that use machine learning, even putting together a training course for those that want to dive in. They regularly post about these topics on their Twitter accounts, so it's worth checking that out if you're interested. That's a lot already, but wait, there's even more. We mentioned mobile-first indexing last time. Given the circumstances, we've decided to change the final date to the end of March 2021. This hopefully gives those remaining sites a bit more time to make appropriate changes. If your site is using WordPress, we're happy to let you know that sitemaps are now a part of WordPress core. This means that any website using WordPress will be able to submit a sitemap file by default. Sitemaps are broadly supported by search engines and help crawling and indexing of new and updated content on your website. Finally, while we can't go to events in person nowadays, we've been busy both on this YouTube channel as well as with a new podcast. On YouTube, we've been posting more Webmaster Conference Lightning Talks, which are short videos based on sessions that we've presented at conferences over the years. In our Search Off the Record podcast, we've been talking about some of the behind-the-scenes aspects of Google Search. If you're keen on hearing about things that don't tend to make it into our official documentation, make sure to subscribe there. Every time I compile these, I realize there's always so much happening in Search, often more than we can cover here. If you'd like to stay up to date, subscribe to this channel, check out our blog, and follow us on Twitter. And that's all for now, folks. I hope you, your family, friends, and coworkers are all doing as fine and fit as possible. Thank you for joining us here, and I look forward to seeing you all again in one of the future episodes of Google Search News. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to add them right here or reach out to us on Twitter.